Okay, year nines. This is a taster session in the GCSE in business studies that you could choose as an option. So I'm Mr. Shropshire. I may have taught some of you in RS or history or geography. So business studies. What do we mean by a career in business? Well, there's an awful lot of jobs that you've probably never heard of, but which pay really well. When I speak to Burnish boys about what they want to do when they've finished school, finished college, they talk about being a businessman. Well, what does it actually mean? What kind of jobs are there? There are many, many jobs. We haven't got time in this lesson to go through them all, but I've chosen some of my favorite ones. So for example, have you ever heard of a buyer or a purchasing agent? I'm guessing you probably haven't. Well, there's a job and it's an international buyer or a purchasing agent or a procurement officer and they are responsible for researching and buying raw materials, components, products for companies and traveling often around the world to negotiate contracts. So for example, if you were working for the company that makes tennis balls that they use at Wimbledon, there are 14 different countries involved in the production of those tennis balls. So an international buyer or purchasing agent, purchasing agent may travel to a number of those countries. If you have to work for Tesco as a buyer, you will have to travel to some of the 70 countries that supply products for Tesco. That's a lot of flying around the world. Great job if you love to fly. Oh, managing Nissan, Nissan cars, their supply chain. That stretches across nearly the whole world. And there are jobs that involve all that kind of travel. Does that sound interesting? Well, it certainly pays well. We're gonna have a look now at some actual jobs that are careers in business. Okay, here we go. Procurement manager, I just mentioned that previously. Here we go, £70,000 to £77,000 a year plus bonus. Procurement manager, nearly £80,000 a year. A manager in logistics, making sure the supply chain is efficient, making sure that the things needed to produce a product are supplied on time. Up to £55,000 a year. HR, human resources, responsible for managing and developing staff. And this job is right here in Manchester, and it's a £60,000 a year job. That's a business job. How about this? You've all heard of lawyers. Many Burnish boys say they want to be lawyers or solicitors. Well, how about this? You can be a lawyer specializing in business law. For example, focusing on negotiating contracts. It's a £70,000 a year job. And it's a business job. That's a business career. Here's another buyer's job. This is buying homeware products. It's a local business here in Manchester. It's £45,000 a year job. Or, aim high, why not? You could use any of the careers on the previous slides as a pathway to becoming a CEO. That's a chief executive officer, the boss. And that is a £200,000 a year job. And it all starts by studying business studies. So let's have a look at work that you could do in the business studies GCSE. So this activity is based on some of the things we actually do in year 10. It's a lesson that will require some, obviously not all, we haven't got enough time to go through all of the skills, but it does cover some of the skills that you need to be successful in a very particular type of business career, which we call marketing. If you've not heard of it, hopefully by the end of this 
little taster session and have a better idea for this particular kind of job. There are a lot of well paid jobs in marketing and it's lots of fun. So this is an actual job that real people have and they will earn over more than £70,000 a year if they are senior marketing executives. So let's get on with it. Let's have a look at this. So we're starting with a key business term, the marketing mix. And you can see the words here, price, place, promotion, product. What is the marketing mix? It's how a business combines its products, its prices, how it promotes, and its place of sale. In other words, where is it sold in order to be successful? We call it the four P's. Can you see why? Product, price, promotion, place. The four P's. Okay, so the marketing mix. What do we mean by product? We mean the thing that a business makes or sells. The thing that the customers buy. It could be trainers. It could be cars, phones, toasters, computer games, food, clothes, bikes, anything and everything really. The product is anything that you can sell that customers will buy. Price. The price is how much the customer is prepared to pay for the product. There's only a certain amount of money you are prepared to pay for certain products. Businesses will try to figure out what that price customers are prepared to pay is. And that's the price they will go for. Because a business usually sets the price as high as they can. Promotion is how the target customers, how do you find them? How do you reach them? How do you advertise to them? How do you persuade them to buy the product? Do you have adverts on the television? Do you have ads on social media? Do you use influencers? Do you have ads on YouTube? Do you have posters and flyers? Or there's many ways of advertising. We're going to focus on the ones that will be on social media or YouTube. And then lastly, place. How is the product distributed to the customer? How does the customer get to buy it? Do they have to go to a shop, a physical shop, or do they buy online? If it is a shop, what sort of shop? Is it an expensive, fancy store in city center? Or is it Tesco? So product, price, promotion, place. This activity we're doing is gonna cover each of these but we'll focus mainly on this one, promotion, because it's fun. So, What we're going to do is start off with a review of Nike's launch of a new product and a campaign an advert that went with it. Okay, so as you watch the clip, 
were there any features that you think Nike were talking about that made them differentiate? In other words, made them different to running shoes made by their competitors. What was there in the advert? And this PowerPoint will be uh, available for you to use, so you can watch that advert again. All you have to do is uh, click on the play button there. You can watch it again if you need to. Is there anything about the advert that you thought, yes, that shows Nike to be in some way different or better than its competitors? <clears throat> the product that was being launched was a Nike Pegasus Turbo. It's a high quality performance running shoe. <clears throat> it's very light. It has very supportive cushioning. It has an elongated heel shape and a carbon fiber plate. This is a professional running shoe. Not all the people who wear it will be professional runners. These are things that will be worn by teenagers. They're not runners, they're not athletes. They just want to wear them because they're cool. price. The price of this product is high. It's £160. Just have a read through that. Okay, so the price fits with the high quality and unique features of Nike's product. Remember that Nike is a global brand that sells around the world. It will persuade customers to become loyal to Nike and pay premium prices. That means high price, okay? Nike settled on a high price of 160 pounds. Not a low price. That is not a cheap pair of running shoes, okay? Promotion. If we know what the product is, we know the price is. This is what Nike decided about its promotion. It was going to create a buzz. In business studies, it's called a buzz. A buzz means when people are talking about the product. There's going to be things like viral advertising to build awareness. The blogs, you know what a blog is? Articles written in running magazines. There would of course be YouTube clips and what you've just watched was an advert used on YouTube and on social media. They would also use athletes who are sponsored by Nike to appear in the adverts. And the place, where is it sold? Nike sells either directly to customers, it does have its own shops, there are Nike shops you can go into, it also has its own website, its online shop. You can also go to specialist running shops and buy the product. You can buy it from the department stores in city centre, but only the high-end ones, the posh ones, Selfridges, for example. It will not, Nike will not sell its high-priced trainers like this one in somewhere like Tesco, because that would not find that would not fit Nike's brand image, okay? So, if we were doing this in year 10, you would analyze Nike's marketing campaign. You would examine the advantages and disadvantages of the way they've done it. And you would conduct a cost benefit analysis. That just means looking how much did it cost compared to how much money they made. Was it worth it that's what we mean by cost benefit analysis was it worth it okay what you would then go on to do is outline a marketing campaign for a competitor to nike and this is what you're going to do now as part of your lesson you're going to do an ad campaign so let's get on to it <clears throat> so you are a marketing executive for Adidas, a £70,000 a year job. 
the board of directors, they're worried. They're worried that Adidas will lose out to Nike. Customers will stop going to Adidas and will go to Nike because Nike's campaign has been very, very good. Your job is to develop and market a rival product to compete against Nike. You'll do this. You'll need to have a design for a new trainer. You can draw it. You can use graphics. You can describe it. You could just find a trainer that you like on the internet and download it. Okay. Set a price. Remember, if you set a price too low, will people buy them? Or will they think the product is cheap and not good enough? If the price is too high, people might not be able to afford it. I'm thinking you're probably going to set a reasonably high price, just like Nike did. Then decide where will the trainers be sold? Will you let any shop sell them or only shops that have the right image? Would you want your Adidas trainers sold in a supermarket? If they're sold on websites, would you allow any website to sell them? Do you really want them sold on Amazon? This is the most important part. And this is the most interesting part. How will you advertise and promote? Would you have TV adverts? Or would you not bother? If the people you want to buy the trainers aren't watching television, then there's no point in having TV adverts. Who watches TV now? Old people like me. Do young people like you watch television? Probably not. You're probably on YouTube or social media. Okay? So decide where you're going to advertise. You'll then need to choose a celebrity. There's always a celebrity to promote a, a, a product. You'll need to think of a message. Message is what you're trying to say about the product. Is it serious, humorous, is it professional, is it street, is it casual? I'm going to show you a couple of adverts now. Now you can always pause this video and read through these bits again, okay? So here is an A6 advert. As you watch it, do you think it's good? Is it bad? Is it funny? What do you think? Would you want your Adidas advert to be funny or more serious than this? Okay, an A6 advert. Do you think you can run faster than Lion? No, I only need to run faster than you. Intended to be funny, but does it give the right message about the running shoe? You decide. Okay, let's go on to task. So, how can you present your work? Here is an example. You'll need to press pause and read through it. I'm not going to read through it all, but you need to have a section on the product. Describe it. Okay. Here's just an image of the trainers that I downloaded because I'm not very good at designing. You need to set a price. What will it be, high or low? Place. Where are you going to sell it? Sports Direct, Selfridges, where? Promotion. Adverts, where will they be? Who will be in them? I have suggested here Ray M. Sterling and Marcus Rashford because they're the kind of people young people my target market looks up to the message for my promotion so there's my four p's product price place promotion the message of my promotion is if you wear our new adidas shoes you can take on any challenge and my inspiration is an advert made by h&m featuring raheem sterling for its 
clothing line, and I'll play you that now. Okay, so that was my inspiration. My inspiration for my video that will be used to promote the new Adidas trainer. So this is my new trainer shoe design for Adidas. This is how I'll set the price, the place, the promotion. And my message is based on challenge. Meet any challenge wearing Adidas shoes. Okay, have a go at developing an Adidas marketing mix. Present your work like this. Just one slide of PowerPoint, that's all. Feel free to link up with other Burnage boys on Teams if you can or if you want to. Discuss ideas. Work together. Because team working is, after all, a very important business skill.